Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here and welcome to BMTV. We are once again joined by Chris Adamo, the superstar in Australia of the Balloon World and the world, in fact. He's here on his the world galaxy. tour. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> um, it's part two. We're in the same room. It's, this, it's just he talks a lot. So we've split this interview and here we are. So Chris, hello again. Sorry to say Thanks you for talk me a again. lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, that's okay. But okay. anyway, I think- You're I not think the first person to say it. <laughs> there's, there's people probably watching this that are brand new or relatively new yeah, there's people probably watching it. I hope there's some people watching it, but brand new, relatively new to the industry. Mm. As somebody who's been in the industry now, what is that, 18, 17, 18 years? Well, you know, like, what do you say about the times I was working for my mother? Like, it's, it's okay. not enough. But I, like, the, the very first job I did for myself on my own back was a balloon drop in 97. Okay, all right, okay. Wow. So I kind of like to think of that as the entrepreneurial side began, and I was working a lot more two to three days a week perhaps yeah, for yeah, my mum. Yeah. So, but I started my own business 16, 17 years ago. Okay, yeah. okay. So in that time, you've got a lot of knowledge. You've obviously developed yourself over that time. What, people starting out right now, what, what advice would you give? What would you say if they wanted to go down the route that you've gone, probably yeah. the decor side of things, mm. what, would you, what would you advise? Um, yeah, like uh, I guess a couple of things we were talking before. It's, 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 it's never been a better time yeah. in a way. But at the same time, I'd be cautious. So, so in our market in Australia, there's, there's just been a flood into the industry. And uh, the, the, the traditional organic pro products, you know, the one-sided arch, mm -hmm. the wall, that kind of thing, I, I think is slowly, subtly coming out of vogue. Okay. So the early interventionists, the interventionalists, uh, the, the stylists, yeah. the trendsetters, you know, who, who have led the way, and they were our first customers years ago, aren't doing so much with balloons anymore, right? Okay. Um, they've moved on to other mediums and all the rest of it, and we need to be aware of that. Um, I can just see less of a demand. You know the organic hot air balloon? Yeah. You know, we were getting two a week. Yeah. Haven't sold one for nearly 12 months. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just a product comes in and out of vogue, like yeah. anything. So there, <laughs> I heard a quote, and I came into work one day, back to quotes, and I said it to all my staff, and they laughed at me. And, and uh, the quote is, you know, don't be better, be different. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, like we, we do see a lot with social media and, and we see all these, these products and, and it just tries to get emulated and reproduced and reproduced. Perhaps better. That's fine. But I think the real niche factor, the X factor for success is to be different, mm. right? To, to take it another way because so much of our business is about... Um, uh, we're selling a, you know, a desirable product that um, people want to uh, be like the Kardashians. You know, it's all about um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it'll come to me anyway. Uh, you know, people want to uh, emulate. You know, people that, that and, and but not just people, but situations. Mm. So that all the whole se selfie moment yeah, yeah. with the organics and the wall and everything. Um, you know, that one photo at your 21st or 30th or whatever you dolled up the lippy and everything. Um, and uh, oh, it's coming to me. I can't forget the word. Uh, Reputation. But, um, no, um, status. Okay. Yeah, there we go. You know, th th there's another quote like we sell, uh, you know, like memories, experiences, but, but status. You know, and that wasn't there before mm. in our industry. You know, it wasn't the chic, cool Lamborghini product to have. Yeah, it, yeah. You know, um, and you just sort of need to be aware. Of, okay, well, if if static is the drive, status is the driving force. Right. How can I then direct my products to facilitate that desire? Yeah. You know, it is what it is, right? Um, I'm, you wouldn't see me getting a selfie in front of it that for my next party, mm -hmm. but it is an exceptionally desirable product. And thank God it is because it's just revolutionized our business. Um, but yeah, don't be better to be different. So take what you have in your life, back to your question, um, up until this point, and apply that to our industry, but in a, mm -hmm. a, a different and wonderful route. You know, don't just follow the trends blindly. I think that's a really good piece of advice because every time we're doing anything in our business, we actually look outside up our industry completely. Mm. Yeah. Not that we've, we've looked at shoe retailers, mm -hmm. we've looked at fashion retailers, this particularly talking about, you know, website design and stuff mm. like that. Mm. Yeah, um, I look at architects and Electronics stuff, yeah. uh, retailers mm. and people that aren't retailers at all mm. and just to get some, some cues from, mm. from them. So, yeah. I think that's, that's really interesting. Yeah, so I guess you know, if you're an upcoming business as well, um, don't do what I did. Um, 
be vocal, be a part of the community earlier than later because mm -hmm. it'll just accelerate your position. Yeah. Um, also, I think I, I heard in, a, in a, an interview, and I have spoken um, with Guido, uh, Guido Van Hoff a, a long time ago, but he had an interesting sort of position where he was talking about his team, uh, where you know, he'd train them and then they'd go and leave yeah. um, and start their own businesses, and he didn't like it at first, but his position changed, how these guys are now his greatest asset. Mm. You know, they, they've been trained by him, they understand the, the, the systems and the products and the methods, and, and let's work together. Yeah. You know, I've now got these people out there who I don't have to pay you know annual leave to you yeah. know who are more per hour but let's collaborate yeah. right and what a wonderful idea and I've seen that happen in this industry so many times that um, if you as an independent on your island trying to figure it all out right team up with other people yeah. you yeah. know um, develop a network of uh, within your community in your area because they're not your competition yet yeah. they're your allies yeah. if they're doing a horrible job and everyone at that party saw these horrible balloons how many of them are not going to order balloons next time, right? Yeah. So you've got to work together to build your market. It's not a him versus us thing. In, in the UK, there is a um, situation where the supermarkets are now selling mm. foil balloons. Of course, yeah. And a lot of people don't like that because mm -hmm. they see it as competition and mm -hmm. they obviously sell it a lot cheaper than, you know, a sole trader working from home yeah. that has just got into the industry. What would your advice be regarding that? I'd assume supermarkets don't deliver. No. No. Okay, well, yeah, that's the first problem. They're yeah. never going to compete with you there. Yeah. You know, installed, deliver, stylized, unique, all of those things, you know, be malleable. You know, perhaps you have to accept, like, of course it happened to us. Um, we had an online store selling uninflated stock, mm -hmm. just couldn't compete. We were on eBay for a while, tried that, didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, we found our niche, which is something that no Google algorithm could ever replace, you know, no Bitcoin technology. Like mm -hmm. if you're an accountant right now or a merchant trader, you know, I, I heard a report, there's chances are half of the CBD, you know, uh, suits won't have a job in 10 years. Really? Right? Because already merchant, uh, stock commodities traders and everything is algorithmic based. Yeah. And they just need to sit there and observe it. They won't even be needed soon. But our industry, that, that, that delivered artistic, unique, you know, service, um, will be around for a while. Yeah. I think we're, we're, we're lucky in that. So, so find out, um, you know, just, just accept what you can't control and focus on what you can. And do something different from what you're saying earlier on. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what we've said before. You can go into a supermarket and get a foil balloon on a ribbon and a weight, there you mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. But can you get something that's far more sophisticated looking mm -hmm. than that, even just with a five inch collar on it, you mm -hmm. know, things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that's advice to people that are getting into the industry. What, not to put people off, but the challenges in the industry, particularly in Australia, mm -hmm. and people's perception of balloons. What's your situation on that? Good paper segue there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, like I guess if the question is more broad than just the environment, I'll mm. think about it for a second. I, I think that the challenge to a lot of people in Australia is diversity in training. Mm. Okay, so just sort of look at that as, as a side, uh, who are one product focused, which is organic, Yeah, is what it is. Uh, working from home or whatever, you've, you've quit your job and you're pump, pumping out all these one-sided arches for christenings, what if they go out of vogue? Yeah. Okay, um, so my advice there is get training, um, push yourself technically into other products okay. um, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I look to lots of people like um, Luis Carlos in Brazil, Scenario Balloons, and the work that he does. And I really want to um, help create that market in Sydney. Right? So beautiful duplet square pack sculptures and structures okay. and huge installations. And that, that's not a thing. And, everyone, and a lot of people come up to me and say, but that's not my market. Right? Yeah. Organics wasn't our market. We created it. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, you know, we created that desire for people to, to want it, to need it, yeah. to, uh, you know, and, and social media is a fantastic thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my, that's my little plan. I want to create a whole new market out of you know, highly technical products and you just got to do it by, by doing it, by convincing that client, by pushing it as option B or C, yeah. you know, uh, okay, here's your logo, we could do it in this, we could print it on vinyl or we could create this giant 3D thing, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. You never know when they're going to bite. You've got to put the hook in. Yeah, yeah. But, but back to, I guess, the, the other part of the, the 
concerns of our industry is, is the environment. Mm. And you know, I'm glad you gave me a segue. <laughs> so I'm a founding member, uh, one, of the, one of four of PIBA, mm-hmm. um, Pro Environmental Balloon Alliance at which I'm so proud that yourself and, and John Bowler and a great team of uh, uh, helping with to create a PIBA UK. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's so much to be discussed there and I'm really excited to work with you guys on that. That's a whole other and show. That's a whole other show, yeah, yeah. great. Uh, and we have PIBA USA yeah. um, by a great team there. And you know, like why did it start? Because uh, I was at Float Convention and I, I was given the opportunity to give an address and I really didn't know what to say. Mm. You know, how do you summarize this feeling, this emotion, and, um, and and our response and blah blah in a few minutes? And all I could think of is, well, why do we start it? And because I, I felt alone, right, with this problem. So people would come to me and they would say, um, balloons are plastic, and we're banning balloons here, and they're killing turtles, so we're not going to kill turtles, and and so on. And I just didn't know how to respond, mm. you know. So through chatting to a couple of um, colleagues around Australia, we decided our industry association at the time wasn't doing much about it. And uh, let's take matters to our own hands and let's create a group. And for the, just by creating the group in itself is doing something, yeah. okay? If you're a journalist and you want to talk to someone about it, who do you talk to, All right? So now we've, we've by, by creating an industry association um, of members and, and a website with, with, with literature and, our, and we then created a stance and a position mm-hmm. which let's stop all balloon releases in Australia. We want to be the first country that is balloon release free. And all we have right now is um, self-regulation of mm-hmm. members mm-hmm. and we want to push that with legislative change. It's a huge problem actually. It's very, very difficult. And in fact, we've spent so many man hours trying to make that happen. We've, we've had um, PIBA members in Canberra with you know, federal ministers uh, and uh, we've, we've hundreds and hundreds of letters to local, state, just like anywhere, governments are multifold and complicated. Mm. And uh, everyone's like, not in my backyard, it's too difficult. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, you got to talk to so-and-so and then so-and-so doesn't answer the phone. So um, we, we've sort of stepped back. Uh, that's still where we want to go, mm. but at least self-regulation is enough. So that's and about specifically the balloon release side. Balloon release side, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'll get into a few other things. Um, but w- with the 800 or so members, many of whom used to do balloon releases mm. and now through having a conversation amongst ourselves and just an understanding of where we are in modern society, yeah. but you can use to smoke on a plane. Yeah. You know, I've said before, I have done balloon releases, very few. I even did one for my own wedding, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I use biodegradable twine, yeah. you know, um, but we release them and I feel terrible now, yeah. you know. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we all need to grow and learn and, and change and react. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the best thing we can do from a marketing perspective for our industry is be environmentally conscious. Yeah. You know? So that's um, like our business, we use green energy and blah, blah, blah. We, re- we reuse our plastic bags to make weights. Um, we um, recycle, you know, uh, do, do the best that we can, right? But also it's um, w- through PIBA, it's education, mm-hmm. right? So just, uh, it's difficult to educate the public from a grassroots group like us. Unfortunately, no matter how many press releases we offer, journalists don't pick it up. Yeah. But if you're a 16-year-old who wrote a school report on a turtle dying, you got front page news. Yeah, yeah. And they won't even call you for a, a response. Yeah. And, and they will sit there and say, plastics is this problem in the world, drinking straws, single-use bags and balloons in the one breath. And our, like, this is one of the biggest issues as an industry. How do we react to that? Mm. Okay. And whenever I get the chance to chat to anybody who, who doesn't understand the dynamics of it all, and I can talk about, um, you know, the, the, a latex balloon being tapped from a rubber tree and being, you know, from such a natural product, you know, and, and, and liquid latex and, and the jobs in first world, third world countries and, and the whole story of how it reduces to nothing and then breaks down slowly over time, mm-hmm. depending on conditions. Right? And, and this is something, I'm a realist. Mm. I will even say to them, look, two meters underground, it's not gonna break down very quickly. Mm. But you'll also have a newspaper next to it and you'll dig both up 40 years later and read page five, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can't say, well, balloons don't break down. So doesn't the newspaper. Yeah. Balloons have chemicals. So does the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we, we just have to be realistic. Um, if, if we can, as an industry, find a way to repurpose, recycle our product, then that's the holy grail, yeah. right? Yeah. If uh, when you have a, dr- a plastic drinking bottle and put it in a recycling bin, your guilt goes with it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even though in Australia, China doesn't accept our plastic recycling anymore. They used to, we just sent it all abroad. And they don't accept, so it goes to landfill. But they still have recycling bins. Yeah. And your guilt still goes with it. Okay. Yeah. So we as an industry are realist. Right? You know, okay, we don't have it yet. But I implore if anyone's out there who has a way. I've heard in South America they, can, they mulch it and add it with wood chips and use it for insulating panels. All right. Because right? Okay. it doesn't burn at a high, mm-hmm. as high a rate as, as, as other materials. You mm-hmm. know? It, it might melt or smoke, but it doesn't burn. It, so it's better for, from a fire rating and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Can you imagine we could have all of our balloon waste used in a, in a, in a, a material that, for construction, mm. and uh, instead of using some other material, you know, they, can, they use uh, latex in bitumen production. We've spoken to so many key players who just won't touch us because we're too small. Yeah. All we need is someone to just chuck it all in with the, and mulch it all up and put it in the, in the roads. Yeah. You know? yeah. I've heard of um, Sampertex apparently make rubber chew toys in South America, right? Out of yeah, used balloons, yeah. right? Yeah. But out of all the inquiries I have for, as a PIBA representative, right, and all the social media stuff, and I hope this conversation is one of them, mm-hmm. I've had no one come back to me and say, Chris, thanks for your inquiry. This is what we do. And how can we help? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And uh, that's all we need. We, can, we through PIBA can create a just distribution network like that. Mm-hmm. We'll have it self-funded. Yeah. You know, and we, and we just got to get this stuff somewhere. We've had meetings with companies who do, this company called TerraCycle in Australia did a great work, but the solution was for hundred grand or, you know, lots and lots of money, um, we can send it all to one place and then it gets sent to Japan and then, you know, no, that's not our solution. We could take that up tomorrow mm. and have our guilt go with it. But that's not what PIB is about. We yeah. need something better. Yeah. It needs to be local. Imagine if you could just melt this stuff um, and make a, a, a gym mat out of it or a work mat and you could have white and red swirls like soap yeah. and yeah. sell it at farmer's markets, yeah. right? Yeah. Low carbon footprint, you know, reusing, repurposing instead of buying the plastic stuff that was made from something that had no purpose, yeah. right? There is a solution out there. We need to help. It's not just the solution, though. It's the marketing of that solution yes. and the press. I think the press focus on balloons being the devil because yes. it sounds so ridiculous. Mm-hmm. We've all been brought up with balloons. We yeah. all know balloons. Balloons represent joy and happiness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This And it makes for a, a catchy headline. Well, exactly. The party got popped and all this stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah. But also, it, it's just a headline. It's like mm. this, you know, yeah. Los Angeles yeah. mm-hmm. banned balloons. Mm-hmm. And well, you read into it, um, they, they banned the release of balloons. And then I, I was reading an article, I can't remember where it was, and it was saying about balloons being bad and mm-hmm. the release of them and all of that. And then it quoted this other report, somebody's academic report. So I clicked on the report, had a read of it, and it was actually, they, they'd misread that report. The journalist did. And the, yeah. yeah, the report was actually positive mm. about balloons, not yeah. negative, yeah, but they yeah. quoted it as a negative thing. Yeah. So it's bad journalism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course, in this day and age of this, oh, mm-hmm. balloons are bad. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. In yeah. their minds, balloons are bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the whole, it's very know, frustrating. Not saying it's fake news, but, but like the issue of fake news in the news, how um, yeah, most websites will just bring up to the top the thing that gets clicked the most. Yeah. And it's a clickable story. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, we, we have a, a great member of our team who we are looking for funding as PIBA to pay uh, one day a week and, and she is uh, she used to be a greenie and uh, used to fight all kinds of causes and sees the rational realistic issue that we deal with great. and is working with us and she's read all the literature right both sides yeah. and is, is a great tome of wisdom and knowledge and, and has helped us draft all those letters to council to, to cite this and that and, and we offer that as a free service yeah. um, in, in Australia at least and I'm sure she'll be happy to answer any questions out, outside to any PIVA member. I, I, think, um, I think that means I've got to have a trip over to Sydney to uh, yeah. have a little BMTV chat with her. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Julie's her name. And, um, I'll be there. You know, I, because most people uh, are lost yeah. and uh, my local council has this. Um, what do I do? Mm. Right. And I think that's that's the, the real value of PIVA is we can uh, either through members or, or through the, the admin team or through someone like Julie um, put you on the right direction yeah. on the website. There's, there's draft letters. Um, there's copies of many different things. And you can you can grab that. There's there's uh, terminology that we, you can use in your own reply. That's great. You know, about the environment, about this, about that. Um, because I think it just has blown out of proportion. And the last thing um, you want to do is be a troll to a troll yeah, yeah, online. Absolutely. Right? You do have these people, unfortunately, they're out there and um, they, they believe so passionately on one side that they're blind to the other side. Yeah. Right? And you just can't do anything about it. Let them be. And our job, I think, as PIBA members 
or the, or the balloon industry more broadly is just to be educated, mm-hmm. right? And just to make it your mission to go out there and head, help spread the word, yeah. right? So have a conversation with people about it. The amount of times I'm popping a job and I can see people say, you're killing turtles. And I say, well, you know what? This, 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 this. And, and this whole huge installation has broken down to that, yeah. right? And that in the right conditions will be that in a year, you know? And maybe that in two years and yeah. so on, right? There's, there's been some, some work done through Pioneer and the, and the Balloon Council, um, which is the, the, the data is yet to be released, but you know, it's 80, 70 something percent of the, the mass in one year is reduced yeah, and yeah. so on. And you can all see that with, the, with having balloons in your backyard. Yeah. And people just need to know, you know, the, the oak leaf analogy works well. The, I, I often say it's just like tapping maple syrup. Yeah, everyone understands what that is. Latex, get you know, into a jar. Um, sure, it's not the best thing for the environment, but neither is driving a car, eating food from a supermarket, or, or getting water from any source that isn't a locally flowing river. You yeah, know? Yeah. And we as, and, and this is an important thing that I, um, you know, I, 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 nothing's perfect. Human beings are killing the world, mm-hmm. and it's up to us to be a best practice, to do the best thing that we can do as a human being within our, our control uh, for the environment. And if you think, you know, flying the whole family to Japan for a ski trip is, is worth it, then, then you should be able to do that guilt-free, right? Mm-hmm. But, but at the same time, um, you know, I don't think it's, it's anyone's job, including um, lawmakers. And we have had this from, from some, some people high up in Australia to say, look, it's not my job to point the finger and to dictate what, what should be the right thing and what shouldn't. Because our product, like all consumption, you know, is, is inherently bad, right? And if I legislate against it, then I'm dictating the rules, yeah. right? I think it's all about free choice and, and the individual to be educated to make their own decision. Mm-hmm. And that's where certainly balloon releases is a decision that we can all decide against. Absolutely. Um, pin it and bin it, you know, just make sure that, uh, I, I remember hotels used to just, I love clean up out the window, yeah. right? That's how we clean up your balloons, <laughs> right? Um, and, uh, it's just making sure that people are educated, not, yeah. not to let little Billy release that balloon yeah. out in the park. Um, tie it down to a weight, you know, be responsible, put it in the bin. Um, you know, obviously, I, I try to use more latex personally as well, you know, because it does mm-hmm. break down. Mm-hmm. Um, but we as an industry just have to um, help spread. I think there's, with the tens and th- how many people do you think are in this industry? 10, uh, 30, 40,000? Yeah. Who uh, knows? Yeah. Right. Tens of thousands. Yeah. And that is a huge base. If you and your friends and your family can all just just be realistic and mm. understand that the information can help sh- spread that, mm. that actually will do a lot. And I think yeah. we're, pretty, we're pretty silent because we don't know what to say. We are. I mean, I think it's, it, it could be, it, it sounds like we're quite a large industry, you know, there's 100,000, a couple of hundred thousand throughout the world. Mm. But it's in the big scheme of things, that's quite small for a mm. world, worldwide industry. And I think it's the, the, the volume we, we struggle with. Mm. But I Here's an anecdote. That, that I think really helps when I'm telling a story about it. We have a, a, um, a hardware store called Bunnings in Australia. Okay. They've banned balloons. Yeah. Just all balloons, including twisters, mm. who with face painting and twisting would give you know, little dogs to kids. And, and that was a huge thing for them. They'd, they'd have hundreds of stores nationally. Every Saturday I'd have a twister or two. Mm-hmm. So people have lost their careers, right? Because all they do is supermarkets or it's just the the extra thing and all of a sudden now their business is no longer viable yeah and they've replaced it with plastic hammers they give to kids they take thousands and thousands of years to biodegrade why because people can't fight plastic yeah you know but one troll about latex balloons and the whole industry changes i saw somebody arguing uh, a point on facebook you know talking about balloons killing turtles and then this person i can't remember where it was or who it was but they uh, said well are we going to ban cars because the number of animals that are killed by cars mm. every year yeah, exactly is yeah. you know millions yeah. so they're, they're sitting there blasting away anti-balloon release stuff as yeah. uh, well not balloon release stuff anti-balloon mm. you know literature online as they're driving their four-wheel drive to the airport on the yeah. way to miami yeah. you yeah. know yeah. like I know. Just, I think we all need to be respectful of each other's you yeah. know, independence, yeah. and uh, and as I said before, best practice and education. Yeah. Um, that's sort of our focus now in in Australia is how to uh, enable and empower members. So we're we're looking to um, you know have more of a e- like structured email outs to mm-hmm. you know, put a sign on your shop window and here's the yeah. sign, here's a PDF, yeah. download it, print it. Here's what you can do. Or Here's how to change your email signature. Or here's an interview with someone and their experience 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and if you're watching this show um, and you do have a great story, please get in touch with Peeva because um, we, we re- are really looking for those human stories yeah. um, so that we can use that as case studies that we can all just, just become a little bit more um, positive or motivated to, to, to then branch out and, and use that as an example in your yeah. own business. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's good. Um, Chris, I can just talk and talk and talk with you. <laughs> and I think we Check could go out. on for hours. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but thank you so much for, for doing this. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks really for having me on. talking to you. Yeah. And um, who knows, maybe we'll see you again very fast. Come to Sydney. Well, well, we'll see you tomorrow. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah for the absolutely. Training. Yep. But then, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm The MTV on Bondi Beach. Yeah, Let's do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I've got to get Beachbody ready. So when I'm Beachbody ready, I'll be there. But Fantastic. Chris, thank you so much. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. 